last night he outlined all 99 before. He addressed Congress and discussed multi-trillion dollar plans that cover topics ranging from police reform to education and taxes. So how did he do? Here to talk to us about it is Democratic Senator Eddie Melton from Indiana. Senator Melton, welcome. And thank you for joining us on BNC and starting your day with us. Um, the president mm -hmm. called out directly white supremacists. He called them the most lethal terrorist threat to the homeland. He did not mince words. I want to know your reaction when you heard the president say that. Well, it was refreshing to hear a president be bold and step up and make a claim to the nation of what we already knew. Um, we've been mm -hmm. uh, witnessing police brutality. Uh, we've been witnessing systemic racism for generations. And to have a president come before Congress and make that claim before the entire world uh, was encouraging. Uh, now we just need the policies to back it up. So yeah, it's something that we already knew. Um, let me just ask a simple question. Why is it that uh, Senator Tim Scott doesn't know that right now? And what did you think when you heard his rebuttal of what the president had to say during his address? <clears throat> well, I was disappointed, just like many black Americans across the country, to say that racism doesn't exist. Um, it's kind of a slap in the face, to be honest with you. You know, we've seen racism uh, more broadly because of social media, because of technology. Uh, to say that it doesn't exist, especially after the verdict coming down uh, for the death of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer uh, it simply is not true, uh, but is misleading also to the American people in regards to the reality of what's going on in this nation. Uh, and to have a black man to make that claim, I think puts us in a, a, a very difficult position as they seek to pass more legislation uh, around police reform in Congress. And as we yeah. as in the general assemblies yeah. across the nation as well, seek to address issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it feels uh, by design pitting a black man up uh, against us on this platform. It feels, I don't know if it is, but it feels like it's by design. Uh, the president wants the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act passed before the anniversary of Mr. Floyd's death. That's next month. Um, we don't know if it's going to get done. I'm hearing some reports by uh, Congresswoman Bass, 80% chance. That sounds good. But what is taking so long when we all watch nine minutes and 29 seconds? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's difficult to say what's taking so long other than uh, there are individuals as blocking uh, the passage. Uh, I don't have the exact details of uh, uh, yeah. the workings behind the closed doors in Congress. Uh, I've been working very closely with Congressman Andre Carson here in Indiana. Uh, he's been keeping us abreast of what's going on. Uh, but I'm optimistic that the Biden-Harris administration uh, can carry their water. And I'm sure with a Democratic-led uh, House, uh, we can get much accomplished. And we're making much progress in the Senate. So um, as I watched the coverage last night, uh, I received more promise than a, a, a lack of moving backwards. So I'm optimistic that we'll move forward with this. Yeah, Senator Milton, it does seem like the Republicans, uh, a lot of them are down uh, to, to, to pass this this legislature, uh, make it a, a, a law. Uh, the nation wants it. We see the polls there. But can it get done with the compromises that the Republicans want, uh, mainly the qualified immunity protecting the individual police officer? Do you think the Democrats will go for that? Well, I think there are certain things of we need to make sure what the people want, right? And what we hear from our constituents across the nation uh, is not uh, making sure we hold police accountable and letting them off the hook when it comes down to uh, misconduct is, is unacceptable. So I think there are some non-negotiables, in my opinion, when it comes down to what the American people, especially black America, wants when it comes down mm -hmm. to comprehensive police reform. Yeah. The economy, jobs, uh, big topics. We know mm -hmm. two things that, you know, affect black and brown people, particularly as we're still emerging out of this pandemic. Um, two million women, though, the president specifically called and spoke to lost jobs during the pandemic so they could care 
for others. How do we fix that? Mm -hmm. what, you know, women support and do so much. How do we fix it? Well, I think he said it in his address, addressing the Paid Family Leave Act, uh, allowing women, allowing families to take the necessary mm -hmm. leave from work without being penalized, especially if they need to take care of elderly parents or individuals in their family that need that extra support. Uh, that number is staggering, but we already knew before the pandemic, it was still a very growing issue. Uh, COVID-19 has only shined a light on the issues that we already know as black and brown communities that we suffer from low unemployment rates or high unemployment rates uh, and so many other issues that this current administration is trying to address. Another critical part that he, he mentioned last night was raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. Here in Indiana, we're still at $7.25 at a minimum wage. Wow. And one of the reasons is my colleagues are saying that they're waiting on the federal government to make that determination. And if the Biden-Harris administration is able to pass legislation getting us to $15 an hour, I believe that's going to raise families out of poverty, is going to address uh, the, the pay equity gap that we talked about between men and women. But that has to be very narrowly focused, zeroed in and addressing this in a very intentional and strategic way. Uh, running out of time, but I want to hit on this real quick. Z you also mentioned uh, four years of free education, uh, two years of preschool, two years of junior college. Also talked about up in our technology. Yeah. But overall, uh, Joe Biden, what he did last night, it was good to see an adult actually uh, give the presidential address again <laughs> after four years. Uh, I just had to throw that in there. But um, his tone, it, it seemed like he was speaking to moderates in a, in a moderate tone, but also reaching progressive progressives. What, what did you think mm -hmm. overall of, of his address last night? I think he did a great job. I think he had to reach every American person that was watching him, uh, those that voted for him and those that did not vote for him, to offer that hope. Let's be honest, it was refreshing mm -hmm. to see a president speak in a bipartisan way, to speak to bring us yes. together as a nation, especially off the heels of this pandemic, uh, to address inequities among uh, racial uh, injustice, to talk about innovation, to talk about our infrastructure, bringing people back to work. It was a very holistic approach. Uh, there were some things that uh, he dived in very deeply on. There were some things he, he touched on that he probably will lay out at a later standpoint. But uh, I'm optimistic that this mm -hmm. administration is doing a phenomenal job in his first 100 days.